Hello again. Thank you for joining me. Uh, this is Andy Laszlo with uh, New Life Ministries. This is the, the third message in a series on, uh, well, we've been talking about predestination. <clears throat> been talking about God's predetermined plans for our lives. We've learned over the last couple of weeks that the happiest you will be, the most blessed, the best taken care of you will ever be by God is when you are doing His will for your life. You can go back, review those messages there online, but we want to continue in that. You know, we started in the book of Ephesians. Chapter 1 tells us He predestined us to be adopted as His sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with His pleasure and His will. I realized as I was continuing with this message, the entire book of Ephesians is dedicated to helping you get connected with God, stay connected with God, fulfill His plans and purposes for your life. So we're going to work right through the rest of the book. Now if I think I'm going to cover the rest of the book of Ephesians in one session, well, you got to know it's going to be a summary. I'm going to hit some very high points from each chapter, and I believe the Holy Spirit will set us up for, well, I tell you what, let's work our way through it. I'll let the Holy Ghost do the work. Anyway, in verse 2 in Ephesians, we read, Therefore, you're no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So we see here that the foundation of our faith, what, what our faith in God is built upon, and Jesus Christ being the cornerstone of that faith is the fact that God is building a house, building a church, building a dwelling place for Him and His Spirit. That church is us. That church is us as part of a building. And that building functions properly when every part is doing its share. The church, that can be Every believer on planet earth, that's the church. Every believer in every country, but every believer in every state, in every community, every believer <clears throat> in every individual church, and every individual church is the body or the church or the dwelling place for God. It's built on each of us doing our part. We're going to see that clearly today. Chapter 3 says, this is verse 8, Paul speaking. And Paul is speaking about the calling and the gifting that is on him. He says, to me this grace was given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Important you see that word mystery. The mystery which from beginning of the ages has been hidden. I'm kind of skipping through verse 10. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church. That's, the, that's that New Testament group of believers making known this mystery to the world. Oh, and by the way, he's making this known to principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Every power, every, every stronghold, especially those strongholds of the enemy. God wants the church to reveal some truth, some mysteries. And here, here's what it looks like. According to the eternal purposes which he accomplished in Christ our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Paul says, for this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 16, that he would grant you to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. This is God strengthening us, strengthening us by his spirit in our spirit that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith that you, that we may know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. That means we only get that by spiritual revelation. 
that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. To him is, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I have a, I have a note on my note over here that says, this is huge. Paul here is talking about the revelation of the church, the function of the church. Well, we're, we're here to get the message of Jesus Christ out. That is true. That's a, a valid description of our purpose. But there's a revelation here. And a, a, a mystery is something that is, we may not see it all at first glance, but God has every intention of opening our hearts through spiritual revelation to understand the depth of what he's talking to us about. And he's talking to us here about the power of God, the presence of Jesus Christ inside of us, God's Holy Spirit coming into union with our, whole, with our human spirits and making us one with God. And his intention in that is to real, reveal God and all of his power to the earth. But what the book of Ephesians teaches us is the way for that mystery to be fulfilled for that revelation to be given in the world it requires every person in the body of christ every member of the church to be operating in the fullness of his or her gifts individually you bet as part of the local body in any area yes absolutely and that part fits into bigger parts and that fits into God's plan for planet Earth. The, the revelation of God revealed through Christ and now revealed through Christ here on Earth with Christ seated at the right hand of the Father. He's being revealed through the church that is us each of us doing our part, put every one of us together, everyone individually doing his part. When you put us all together, we have the complete and full ministry of Jesus Christ here on earth, just like it was when he was present in the flesh, but now it's here on earth by every believer individually doing his part. We come together as his body. He is the head and his ministry continues on the earth as God intended it. Now, again, I'm hitting this rather quickly. More to come in the weeks to come. This is chapter 4. It rather expounds on what I just said, but here's the word on it. To each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. I'm going to skip through. Verse 8. He gave gifts to men. Verse 11, he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. What are, what are those ministries? What are those gifts for? For the equipping of the saints, that's you and me. For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ, that's to build up the church. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. That means mature in every way, fulfilling God's purposes through relationship with him in every way. Till we come to the unity of the faith, knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. Verse 15, speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Verse 16, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Here's my summary note. You doing your part, me doing my part, every one of us doing our parts, is what the body of Christ is on earth. Verse 5. Sorry, chapter 5. See then, verse 15, see that you walk circumspectly. That says stay right on track. Not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Make the best of every moment. Now is the time for that. Do not be unwise. Understand what the will of the Lord is. 
Hasn't this whole series been about determining the will of God for our lives and for our churches and making sure we walk in that, that we fulfill that? Be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. You know, I've been saying this for years when I teach on this passage. It sounds like a good description of a spirit-filled church, Pentecostal worship service, kind of like we have around here. And it is a good description of that. But it's also a very good description of a culture that is connected with God through His written word and especially the Psalms. It's talking about a Christian culture that knows the word of God, worships God with his written word, especially the Psalms, interacts with each other on such a level that they're talking about what's being given in the Psalms, what's being prayed about regularly through the Psalms, how to worship God with the Psalms, and it creates a culture of knowing God's word interacting with brothers and sisters in church services, Sunday mornings, and every other time you get together, interacting based on the Word, following the Holy Spirit, and speaking to one another based on what the Holy Spirit is saying and doing and revealing as we interact with each other this way. Here's what I said in my note. We create an atmosphere and a culture where we understand the will of God, where we stay filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's another way of saying letting Him flow through us unhindered. And it says in that culture or in that atmosphere, we submit to one another in the fear of God. Simply means we hear from God and we encourage each other to stay connected with God based on the things we're receiving from Him. Now, how in the world do we reach the goal that's described here? Remember, verse chapter 1 tells us this whole book is about fulfilling your purpose and your destiny in God. The rest of the book is giving us some pointers and some guidelines all towards reaching this goal. Now, this spirit-filled atmosphere, creating a spirit-filled culture that I just read to you in chapter 5, that's a very, very, very plain definition of what it will look like and how we get there. Here's a note I want to end on. Chapter 6, you've heard it many times. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To the end, to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. How do we pray with the sword of the Spirit? We take the Word of God. We take the Word of God right off the pages. We take any prophetic word God ever gave us, and we pray using that Word. In January, the new year, I'm going to begin a Spirit-filled worship prayer meeting based on Ephesians 5. We just read it. We're going to know what the Psalms say. We are already in this church praying one Psalm per week. I encourage you, get the videos, pray along with us through those Psalms. And we're going to have a prayer meeting at least one a month, maybe even more. We'll start it in January. We will pray what God has been telling us to pray through the Psalms. We will encourage each other to stay connected with God through the Psalms. We will pray every kind of prayer we know. That means worship. That means prophesying. That means reading scripture out loud, declaring that what it says is going to come to pass. By the way, that's another way of saying prophesying with the written word of God. We're going to begin these spirit-filled prayer meetings that are described in the book of Ephesians as the way that we, through prayer and through faith in God's word, will guarantee that we fulfill God's purposes for us as individuals, we'll fulfill our destiny. As a church, we'll fulfill our destiny and we'll see God's will for New Life Ministries Helper Utah, we'll see that fulfilled by the Spirit, God's grace and power bringing it to pass. And we'll see it for every individual in this church. 
And by the grace of God, hopefully we and hopefully and intentionally we'll try to bring that to every church in the community and we'll try to affect the Christian culture around us to get connected with God, fulfill His will and purposes as individuals and as churches. That's the fulfillment of the church doing its part, making a difference in the communities where these churches are planted, the church being effective in the culture where God has sent us. That's enough for today. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters joining me online to hear the word of God. And I sow this word of God in the good ground of their hearts. Holy Spirit, water that word. Nurture it. Cause it to bear 30, 60, and 100-fold return, which will result in us fulfilling our God-given, God-ordained purposes in this earth. I thank you again for my brothers and sisters. I bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, thank you again for joining me online. We'll see you again soon.